In this example, we want to find the square root of the complex number negative three plus two i. To begin, we'll let z equal the complex number negative three plus two i. So this would be equal to the square root of z, or using rational exponents, this would be equal to z to the one-half power. Now for the first step, we'll write the complex number negative three plus two i in polar form, also referred to as trigonometric form, where z is equal to r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. And we have our formulas here for r and theta. So once we write z in polar form, we'll apply Dumov's theorem to determine z raised to the power of n, and in our case, n will be equal to one-half. So we'll have z to the one-half equals r to the one-half, times the quantity cosine one-half theta plus i sine one-half theta. Let's begin by plotting the complex number on the complex coordinate plane. Notice how in this form, x would be negative three and y would be positive two, where the x-axis is the real axis and the y-axis is the imaginary axis. So we'd go left three units and up two units so this point here would represent the complex number on the complex coordinate plane. So notice how this length here, or this distance, would be r, the radius, and if we sketch a reference triangle, since x is negative three and y is positive two, we would label this leg negative three and this leg positive two and angle theta would be this angle here. Notice how theta terminates in the second quadrant. So now let's go ahead and find r and theta. So r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, or in this case, negative three squared plus two squared, which would be the square root of 13. And now to find theta, tangent theta is equal to y divided by x, we're using our reference triangle. Notice how tangent theta would be equal to positive two divided by negative three, or tangent theta equals negative two-thirds. So if we take the inverse tangent of both sides of the equation, theta equals inverse tangent of negative two-thirds. Now let's go to the calculator and determine theta. Let's use radians to determine the angle. So we'll press mode. Notice how we are in radian mode, so we'll go back to the home screen. And now we'll press second tangent for arc tangent or inverse tangent, negative two-thirds. Close parenthesis and enter. Now remember the range for inverse tangent is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two radians here. But we know our angle is in the second quadrant so the calculator is giving us this angle here in the fourth quadrant, so we'll have to add pi radians to find our angle. Again, the calculator is giving us this negative angle here in the fourth quadrant that has the same tangent function value, but we're looking for the angle that terminates in the second quadrant, so we'll have to add pi radians to the angle the calculator gave us. So we'll take this value and add pi, which gives us our theta of approximately 2.5536. Which means in polar form, our complex number, z is equal to r, which is the square root of 13, or if we want 13 raised to the one-half power, times cosine of 2.5536 radians plus i sine 2.5536 radians. Now remember this is z and we're looking for z to the one half. So now we can apply Dumas theorem where n is equal to one half. So we'd have z to the one half equals the square root of 13 to the one half which is equivalent to 13 to the one-fourth power, 
times cosine of, again, if n is one-half, our angle is now one-half times 2.5536 radians plus i times sine, again, one-half times 2.5536 radians. And now we'll go to the calculator and get our decimal approximation for the real part and the imaginary part of our square root. Where the real part would be this product and the imaginary part would be this product. So again, the square root of 13 raised to the one-half is equivalent to 13 to the one-fourth, but I'll go ahead and use this form. So we'll have in parentheses the square root of 13, right arrow, close parenthesis, raised to the power of one-half, or one divided by two, right arrow, times cosine of one-half, or point five, times theta, which is two point five five three six radians. So the real part is approximately zero point five five. And now to find the imaginary part, we'll find the second product. So again, we have the square root of 13 raised to the one-half power times, we won't enter the i now, we'll just enter sine, again, 0.5 times theta. So the imaginary part is approximately 1.82 i. So plus 1.82 i. And now we have found the approximate value of the square root of negative three plus two i. I hope you found this helpful.